Data communications. Talk about data communications all the time, but I rarely have a great example of it. And so today I want to present to you something that our National Weather Service gave us, and it's a masterclass in effective data communications. Now, first thing to understand about data communications is it is a form of communication. And when you communicate, you are doing it for impact, for purpose. You have communication objectives falls into a basic framework. And I talk about this a lot. When it comes to data science, you are serving inference. So your framework, your objectives, the, the overarching structure, I guess, for how you communicate is prediction, what's happening, assessment, what do we think about it? And then finally, a call to action or a prescription. Here's what we need you to do about it. Now, in this first visual that you're looking at right here, what you're seeing is a lot of times what we as data scientists do when we're presenting data. We'll send an email that looks a whole lot like this and it's dry. Yes, it has all the information you need to make a very good decision for yourself about this impending storm. It has some fairly good detail in here's your prescription right here. Now's the time, you know, pre precautionary preparedness actions. And this is a lot like our emails. However, when we send emails like this, we forget about our audience. It's like we think we are the audience and everyone consumes data like we do, which they don't. Especially if you're talking to senior leadership or other business units, they just don't do it that way. Now, visualization. We all understand that visualization is a great way to present data in a more effective communications framework. And this is absolutely amazing. Y your eyes are immediately drawn to the timeline. Sunday orange, Monday into Tuesday red, gets yellow and green into Wednesday, and then Thursday it's back to orange. I don't even have to look at the legend down at the bottom. I've been trained throughout my life, and pretty much all of us have. Green good, yellow orange, getting worse, red bad. And I, I absolutely love that if the person has the attention span of a gnat and will not read anything, which as engineers, we may be guilty <laughs> at times of not reading the entire communication summary. But this, no matter what, gets your attention and immediately conveys information without you having to consume or figure it out. And that's something that's important about using colors in visualization, using any sort of, th this sort of timeline is simplistic. I understand it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every day is labeled. I didn't get like Sunday on one side and Thursday on the other side. I don't have to fill any gaps in. So that's why this timeline is so perfect. It's got the winds, it's got a basic color coordinated graph for the what, and now I have an idea of, oh, okay, today's Sunday, so I am into the orange right now, but I look at Monday and I go, oh, it's gonna get worse. And now I have each one of these callouts, and it's clear what day each callout is associated with. They didn't just you know, give me the dotted line, they gave me the day on top of it too. It's repetitive, but yeah, it's okay. You want to make sure you're clearly communicating what day each one of these corresponds with. And you notice they spaced it beautifully and it's just a blurb, really simple. Snow begins, continued heavy snowfall, heavy snowfall with major travel impacts. Main storm begins to exit, quickly moving system will bring additional snowfall. And I'm now drawn in and of course I'm gonna to go to the legend last, you know, and I'm going to read, oh, Sierra Impact Timeline. And, you know, so now I'm engaging with it and I'm reading more. And you can expect your audience to kind of go through the same cycle of engagement with your visualizations if they're effective. And I, I just want to point out one more thing about this legend, which is perfect. You would think, well, we're not using extreme impact, so why include it in the legend? Well, I'm setting up and this is what they're doing. They're setting up for the next event which could potentially be more extreme. And so they want to, even though they're not using extreme, and I, I love red, I call it ruh -ru reggae red after Scooby-Doo and people may die purple because, it, and it's so perfect because red shows extreme in your mind, but purple now they're setting up. What happens the next storm? If it's worse, you now know if you see purple, you are now trained that it's, oh, hey, really bad. And so that's, a wonderful setup for the next visualization. You want to think about that. This visualization doesn't exist in isolation. This communications device 
is not isolated. I'm probably going to use it again. And I want to train the people who are consuming the information to be ready for something that's even worse, potentially, or something that's different, potentially, maybe better. So I want to, even if I don't use the colors, if I'm going to use this same color scheme in the future, I want to communicate that. Put it down on the legend. It's great. And it, it is an absolutely amazing opportunity to set up for next time. Because if red happens and it's horrible, I'm going to remember red. And if I see purple, what am I going to think about? You mean it's worse than that one time? And, and I now have a frame of reference. So it's not just a color in my mind. That color is connected to an event. And that's how we learn. As people, we make those types of connections between the way data is presented to us and an actual event in real life. We give a, con a, a point of context, I guess. So this is how you present data to the C-suite. And I talk about, you know, the basics of, config of communications frameworks. Uh, I've got a bunch of classes where I integrate that in, but I, just remember the three basic pieces. I promise I won't go over this too much more deeply. You can take a class if you're really that interested. The, the first one is what's going on, and that's your prediction. The second one is your assessment. What do we think about it? And then finally, third, what do we need you to do about it? And this visualization makes all of that absolutely obvious in a way that I can use the information even if I have the attention span of a gnat. <laughs>